that's what everybody is fighting for. That'll be on the line tomorrow in the team championship uh, when all these teams will take the strip. Every team in every discipline will fence each other. Uh, it's a really interesting day of fencing. It's at times somewhat chaotic out there, David, yes. when the teams go for it tomorrow. But one more individual belt to fight for here. Philip Doherty of Notre Dame on the right, Brian Wong of Boston College on the left. Wong got to the championship last year. He wants to capture it today, and Philip Doherty standing in his way. Come together quickly here. Again, this is foil, so if you're just watching Epe, unfamiliar, a little bit different. You do have right of way here. The whole body's not a target. When you're watching foil, David, I know you're familiar. What are the keys to look out for? So we're, we'll, we'll see a lot of you know the, the same principles that we saw in Sabre in terms of what which body is moving forward faster and which and then which arm is going forward faster. The arm is a little bit more indicative in this weapon than it is in Sabre. But the offense is also not quite, you know, like offense and defense are fairly balanced in this weapon, right? You can, you know, it, it, it's right in the middle between Sabre and Epe, where Sabre oh! offense is key, Epe defense is, you know, has the advantage here. It's, you know, either way you want to play it, depending on what your strengths are. And this is Boston College's only individual participant in a championship today. Brian Wong, you saw his head coach there, Brendan Doris Pierce. He wants this place to erupt. He wants this building to will on Brian Wong and hopefully capture that elusive championship. Notre Dame is now five for five on the day, uh, but what a way to end if Brian Wong can do it. He's made the semifinals three consecutive years. He was fourth in 2021, finished second last year. Oh boy, they come together. Yeah, when, when, when the bodies get that close, it, yeah. can be, it, it could be hard to put that point on. So that's, what, that's what's called infighting when you get close and you're just kind of, you know, desperately trying to, to you know, put a light on. This could also carry some momentum into tomorrow. You know, this is a men's team that performed well last year. They beat Duke in Duke's building, finished second in the men's competition behind Notre Dame. If they can maybe get Brian Wong at the top of the podium here, or they wake up tomorrow with maybe a different pep in their step for the team competition. And one thing we haven't touched on really yet is it's been a long day for these guys, right? <laughs> and they, they're, so in, endurance is absolutely a factor here. So that graphic right there, BC has never won an individual or team title. Duke, North Carolina, and Notre Dame have all captured individual titles over the year. And bo both touches the last two, uh, over commitments on one side and counterattacks. Doherty won his semifinal match 15 to eight. Wong won it 15 to 12. So you see Wong really really playing with fire there. He's, he's, pulling, his, he's pulling his arm back. You know, like trying to get his close distance and, and, you know, rolling the dice on letting letting his opponent's point get close to his chest and, you know, maybe maybe got a little bit too uh, risky with that. Let's look at Gia Cavaraskelia now nine years as the head coach at Notre Dame. He's won four national championships since he's become head coach. Yeah, and, last two. And I want to say, you know, I mean, he's been he's been at Notre Dame for I mean, even nine years as head coach. Yeah. I want to say at least five before that. So yeah. he's he's he's. Really had, you know, while not all, you know, all, all those years where as head coach, he's been shaping this team for a very long time. Yeah, three seasons prior as an associate head coach and five before that as an assistant, so right. eight total on the staff. They've had nine NCAA champions in foil over the years at Notre Dame. You see Brian Wong really, really pushing that prep. He's really, you know, he, he's pulling his arm back so much, really hoping that he can just back him up far enough and, and re, you know, run in there with his arm back so he doesn't get parried. But it is a risky game. Last year was Andrew Makovic for Notre Dame that won this discipline. And you can see Finn Hosfield, who we saw earlier today in the semifinal, he got bounced. Uh, earlier in the bout against Wong. And then, of course, Nick Itkin, who had a great run here at Notre Dame and, and elsewhere. Uh, Foil, as you mentioned, on the women's side, really strong on the men's side as well. Mm -hmm. Derek Meinhardt winning a pair of national championships back in what, 2010 and 2014? Yeah, both against me in the final. Was that against you in the final? Yeah, both times. I yeah. thought it was the semifinal. Oh, uh, he beat me in the final both times. You bring that up at the best man speech or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I was the best man, but I was in the party. I, I, was, okay. I was grumbling out of my arena. <laughs> You're in the photos with uh, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. with their hands grasped behind his yeah, neck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, man. Didn't mean to bring up the old wounds, but <laughs> what were the scores? Do you know the scores? Uh, of one of them, I think, was the last one, I think, was 15, 12, or 11. And I think the, uh, the one my freshman year, his sophomore year, I think, was also 15, 12. I thought, uh, something, so not 14, 14 bouts, but, but you know, reason, you know pretty, pretty close. Stole it from under me. Never let him forget it. I know. <laughs> Actually, Garrick uh, recently won a... Uh, World Cup in um, in Turin just a couple of weeks ago, so he's still very much, uh, an, you know, an amazing fencer. Also in the in the Hall of Fame for the for the International Fencing Federation. You mentioned it. Yeah, two national championships. You walk around Notre Dame. You say the name Garrick Meinhardt. People know what you're talking about. Right. But Notre Dame's showing that. I mean, they're continuing that legacy, right? Yeah. And this is this, this is Gia's weapon, it's right? It's his weapon, yeah. Yeah, yeah there's an, you could look at Meinhardt and Kiefer and think, oh, that was just two great foilists that have helped you make your name. But then you look at that list we just saw, and yeah. it's just boom. Every year, Itkin, Olivares, right. Makovic, they're all good. And Extremely now, strong. Now you're seeing yeah. Doherty show up uh, in his first appearance here, and he's seven touches away from an ACC championship. Yeah, he's, he's in control of this bout. He's playing it very smart. I think, he, you know, he's... he's on his attacks, he's going. He's getting, he's getting very nice. You know, he's he's doing what he's intending to do, right? He's doing he's doing nice feints, going around the parries. He's he's disciplined on defense. Brian, when Brian Wong pulls his arm back just a bit too much, he's ready to capitalize on it. Something Doherty has done this year is he's fenced in every single event Notre Dame has participated in. Fifty-five bouts coming into the weekend, so he's up to over seventy now. If you include the fifteen today, yeah. yeah. Look at all that BC support. It's one of the big advantages of having this event every four years in your backyard. And they come across there. You said once they come across, you only get one swing, get basically. Get one shot, yep. yep. <laughs> Nicely done. Both of them kind of coming in the center, not quite ready to hit. And then Brian Wong ready to, you know, just stick that point in as they get close and close out his target after. 13 seconds left. I think he's got. They're still going to put the pressure on each other. And no let up here. It's long. Oh, he's taking some momentum into the end of this opening period. Yeah, a bit of a flub from Doherty. I think he, he had the attack and his point, and, and the target was there. He just, you know, I think he just got caught a little bit off guard by Brian Wong choosing to to dive in on that. So bringing it back. I mean, seven nine. This went from. You know, uh, a comfortable lead, by no means insurmountable uh, for Doherty. But now, seven nine. This is still anybody's game. I will say, going back to the endurance point that we made earlier, I, I think that uh, Doherty has a bit of a more disciplined style, hmm. where he is. Rel it's more consistent. Where I think Brian Wong likes to make uh, larger, more. Risky actions, which when you are tired, become even more risky because mm -hmm. you your reaction time might just be a little bit worse. You might not be kept, you know closing the distances you know quite as quickly. Uh, where what works for you early in the day might make you know you just barely might miss those later in the day. You know we talk a lot about Notre Dame for good reason. <laughs> They've earned the spotlight, but this Boston College team. They have just made strides every single year under Brendan Doris Pierce, now in his fifth season. You see the number there. They've still not gotten over the hump with an individual title. But the men's team, as we mentioned, second place last year. And this is, you know, really their weapon, foil. Well, you've got Wong, and then, of course, Yang and Huang were all top six in the individual portion last year. That was a big reason why, in foil, they made a lot of progress uh, en route to that team victory. He's kind of building something here with this foil group that you can see, too. They're competing with, we just praise Notre Dame and how good they are foil at mm -hmm. not just the ACC level, but the national level. He's got someone here in Wong that has been consistently in the semifinal portion, taking on some of the best foilists in the country. Yeah, and that, and that depth really helps to bring up, you know, your tops, right? With having that, that, that training environment, right, where you're all pushing each other further and further. Okay, big moment now as Wong gets one back. Oh, he needed to keep it close, and he did just that. 
And I think those, those are the types of touches that Brian Wong likes to go for. He likes to go for those long, big attacks. And like that, like that as well. He wants the speed. He wants to chase people down. And he hasn't been able to do that, really, until now. It's rare you see this, too. Such a home court advantage. This is a really difficult spot for Doherty to be in. He's kind of got to feel like the whole building is rooting against him right now. Oh, barely. So, so barely was able to sneak in that off target and make that save on the attack. So Doherty was able to, you know, nick him on the way in. But Wong, they're doing a good job of saving it. But a very nice see. Like, he's, he's been doing those very well. He's staying defensive, and he's waiting for those moments of hesitation, doing a nice faint disengage into his prep. Oh, that's a great shot of Gia Kavara. Skelly has been pretty stoic until then, telling him to keep doing that. Doherty does that once more. He's looking for that, right? He, like, he knows that that's, what, that's what he's looking for. He's waiting for those big moments of prep, you know, preparation or hesitation when Brian Wong's not ready and diving in on those. Doherty now three touches away. Ooh, he's off target. Brian Wong needs to be, he needs to be careful. What, one thing he did on those attacks that he got, uh, his last two touches, was he, was at, he, he anticipated it well. He didn't prep it too long. Mm. He made a feint, and he, and he committed to the attack early rather than dragging it out too long. So whether he can do, keep doing that, so, so he, he's a little bit more. He's, he, you can see there he, he didn't quite have the same intent there. No, it was 10-9. Good response by Philip Doherty. This whole building had come alive. And now Doherty's managed to fend him off and at least quiet the place for now. But still some work to be done. In a 13-9 bout as Wong has gone to his bag here. Yeah, I think he might be changing a foil. We saw this in the last championship bout when Candela needed to change his weapon as well. well it looks like it's having a little trouble passing the weight test. Similar to what we saw in Epe. Uh, your foil has to be able to push up a certain amount of weight uh, so that it's not too soft to depress. It's going to try and do a little bit, you know, a little bit of troubleshooting. Hopefully it fixes it, and it looks like it worked. Let's go, Brian! All right, so Wong has made his equipment change, and they feel like the time is now. 14-9, uh, it's a deep hole to climb out of. He needs to rattle off a couple here, you figure, to give him that hope with Doherty just two touches away from the belt. Gets the new weapon and gets a touch immediately. Be ready on your first step. Oh, Doherty wastes no time and comes right back. And now Philip Doherty. That's right, yes. just one touch away. I think a very smart move to just kind of change the, you know, change that pace. Like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to attack you. So attack from left off target. I, I think he's wondering if he got the parry. I think the call, you know, that, that, I think that he, he's, he's going to replay it. Thinks he caught the parry on the way in. Um, I'll have to see. It looks like he's it's probably still a beat from the uh, left. Yeah, I think that's got to call. You know, still be attacking left off target. So they go to the monitor. All right. Call stands. We'll continue. Doherty still with one touch can win it. Oh, nothing. And then the light comes on and they'll reset. Oh, oh, and That's it's Doherty. Philip Doherty wins the men's foil championship, and it's a clean sweep for the Notre Dame men. That's got to feel bad for, for Wong. I think he, it looked like he hit there, and that, that probably would have been a same time attack, so no touch, but he, his tip didn't go off. I think he's probably a bit upset about that, but a good a good win for Philip Doherty. He, he, I mean, he, he had a game plan, and, and it, it was, I, I think he played that exactly right the whole bout. Here's the final touch. What'd you see? Well, Doherty gets the championship. Notre Dame, unlike last year when Eli Lippman kind of spoiled it, the freshman from North Carolina in Epe uh, managed to get the lone non-Notre Dame individual championship. Notre Dame does exactly what they did three years ago in 2020. Uh, that was the last time they had a clean sweep. All six All individual up. titles go to Notre Dame uh, as the women and the men sweep. And we're now joined by the newest ACC champ, Philip Doherty. i got to ask you, that was a great bout between you and Brian over there at Boston College. How did it feel to capture that ACC championship? 
Oh, it was <laughs> it was great. Um, I lost to win pool, so I really had to focus up on what I needed to change and just show them that I wasn't afraid, you know? And what were some of those changes? It looked like you were doing a really good job of just capitalizing on all those you know, moments of prep or big actions, and you were just ready to dive in on those. Is that kind of what you had in mind going in? Yeah, I needed to be more aggressive and then be more confident that I didn't need to counterattack on defense and just wait for the parry and then go for it. Hey, I want to ask you about the environment down there. Of course, Boston College is fencing in their backyard. They had a lot of support. It probably at times felt like it was a road fencing bout of sorts. Uh, what were you able to do to kind of stay locked in even when it seemed like every touch that went against you uh, the whole building was exploding. Well, you know, I had my team behind me, and I knew that they had me 100%. And any time like, they were screaming really hard, I heard my team in the background screaming just as hard, and that helped a lot. Well, Philip, congratulations on the championship. Enjoy it tonight, and good luck tomorrow on the team event. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, there's the newest champ. Philip Doherty wins in foil for Notre Dame. They sweep it in the men's and the women's. All six go to the Irish. We'll step aside and come back with the awards after this. Look at that. Can't do anything. Can't sit, can't stand, can't walk the walk, can't talk the talk. Mommy, Miss is in trouble. Can't juke, can't blitz, can't dunk. Can't control the ball, can't control your bowels. Can't aim, can't hit, can't slug, can't nothing. Can't windmill, can't ollie, can't play by the rules. You try the green beans. Cannot deal. Can't be like Pops, eh, can't putt, can't this, can't that. Can't downward dog, can't master the fundamentals. Can't stiff arm, can't side arm, can't have the most yards in a season. Can't float like a butterfly, can't sting like a bee. Can't win that big game on TV. You're born the original impossible. You spend the rest of your life proving nothing is. And the Sabre champion, a junior from Notre Dame, Luke Linder. All right, these are the men's Sabre champions being honored. Let's listen in as Luke Linder is atop the and podium. Your top three finishers in the Sabre. For the F.A., in third place, a sophomore from Boston College, Levi Hughes. In second place, a freshman from Notre Dame, Nick Candela. And the Epe champion, a freshman from Notre Dame, Marwan Osman Tucson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your top three finishers in the Epe. For the foil, in third place, a senior from Duke, Finn Hosfeld. In second place, a senior from Boston College, Brian Way. And the foil champion, a sophomore from Notre Dame, Philip Doherty. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your top three finishers in the foil. Congratulations to all our men's individual award winners. 
We look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow for the team championships. Thank you for your support of the Atlantic Coast Conference and have a good night. So those are your champions today in the individual portion. As you saw, three Irish atop the men's podium. Three were on top of the women's podium as well. The women will start tomorrow in the team championship, as you see, at 8 o'clock Eastern time. We'll crown a team champion probably a little bit before noon and then slightly after noon. Uh, you'll see that 12.15 start. Uh, I imagine that one will wrap up around 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. The men will have a team champion as well. Notre Dame will attempt to do what they did back in 2020 when they swept the individuals and the team championships. Uh, that's what they're going for tomorrow in the ACC's. Thanks for joining us tonight. It was great to watch the individual portion of the championships for my broadcast partner, David Ouellette, and the rest of the outstanding crew here in Boston. This is Tony Simeone saying so long. We'll see you tomorrow for the Team ACC Fencing Championships.